Hello guys, welcome back to Day of the Tentacle. We just followed Dr. Fred here. He started opening this in his sleep, but we uh, can't really uh, get the contract because he closes it too fast. So let's just walk out, see if we can figure out something else to do. Let's head upstairs. So there's an ice machine. Let's open that up. It's pretty darn cold. Let's press shift and see if there's anything else here. We can interact with the candy machine. We do have a dime. Except for those beef squigglies, I got everything I want out of there. Mmm, that buzzing fluorescent light makes the beef jerky look especially attractive. Let's check all these doors. <laughs> Sleeping conventioner. Uh, he must be attending the funny convention downstairs. There's a television here. This beautiful 4,000 carat diamond can be yours today for the special rock bottom introductory price of $2 million. The number to call is 1 800 Star Wars. Don't miss this amazing once in a lifetime opportunity. So, I guess we know how to get the diamond now. Fickle fingers, coin slot. There's also a surveillance camera here. And a sweater under him. Let's take a look at the surveillance camera. Hi there! <laughs> Flashing his best nerdy smile. What about this one? Can we use that? Exactly sure what that is. Up too late? Try a fickle finger's fate. Stick in a dime and you'll have a good time. Alright, let's just try that. So we do have a dime. So it moved him closer to the edge, but not over it, so maybe we need one more coin. We know there's another coin stuck in the floor downstairs. I can almost get it now, but Lardo is lying on the sleeve. Let's see if we can uh, do anything with the phone. Couch Potato Shopping Channel, Wanda speaking. Uh, I want to buy a diamond. That will be two million dollars. Do you have a major credit card? Um, I have a numbered Swiss bank account. What's the number, sir? Um, it's 846-427-35327. I'm sorry, the Credotron shows that account to be empty. So I guess we need to sign that contract that Dr. Fred is looking at downstairs and send it back in time. Let's head through the door here, see what's in there. You never really know what's behind these doors. It's useless. No one will ever be interested in my design. So I'm ending my novelty inventing career right here in this tacky motel. How appropriate. <sighs> I can't even do this right. What a sad face. Disappearing ink. Let's grab that. There's another camera. I'm afraid I'll see Edna. The TV set. I can't see it very well from here. I can't reach that from here. Let's look at the picture. I can't see it very well from here. Maybe we can talk to him. Hi, my name's Bernard. What's yours? Dwayne, isn't that depressing? Gee, you look depressed. What clued you in, Brainiac? The stooped shoulders and long face? I'm having a crisis here, a warehouse of anguish. I'm a novelty goods designer by trade. I've come up with some fabulous ideas. The exploding lollipop, 
itching powder gum and reverse 3D glasses to name a few. The problem is no one likes my designs. I send them all over the world and no one responds. I just wish someone would say they liked one just once. Oh, woe is me. I like your design ideas. Well, I didn't mean you. Maybe I can help cheer you up? Oh, I can hardly wait. Maybe some calisthenics would help. Last time I tried calisthenics, I ruptured my spleen. Ugh. Why don't you try whistling a happy tune? I invented a whistle that turned your lips green. Nobody liked it. <laughs> I wonder why. Let's discuss philosophy. Okay, here's my philosophy. Life is completely pointless, especially mine. Nietzsche had some interesting ideas along those lines. Oh, who cares? Philosophers are all failures like me who couldn't make it in a real profession. Nice music they pipe in here, huh? It's from the Elevator Classics series. It seems like this one tune has been on all day. I've never been so depressed in my life. Uh, never mind. All right, we've had enough of that. <laughs> Let's get out of there. Let's open up here. Let's check this door. Green! Bernard! What are you doing up here? Well, I couldn't stop Purple, and he's going to go out and conquer the world, and, and I'm afraid of what he'll do if he catches me, if Dr. Fred doesn't find me first. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Hey! What's up, Bernard? What do you suppose Purple's up to now? Well, he wants to take over the world, so I figure he's up to something devious. Conducting cryogenic experiments on small animals? I wouldn't doubt it, but I was thinking more along the lines of politics. Want to help me save the world? I'm afraid to leave the room. In fact, I don't think I can even move from this spot. Purple scares the daylights out of me. How's your new band doing? Green tea and the sushi platter? We're doing great! We've decided to really capitalize on our strongest quality as a band. Provocative lyrical content? Volume, man! Volume! We have a chance to win a Grimy Award as the loudest new band. We're pulling out all the stops. Weren't you looking for a new guitarist a while back? Yes, but we decided to go with a guy who plays power tools instead. We can generate a lot more sound that way. Are you working on an album? Yeah, we're doing a CD called Rap on the Forehead. I've got a few tracks hooked up through the stereo if you want to hear them. Have you gotten any airplay? No, we're a little too experimental for most radio stations, but we have a huge following in the club scene. That's great. Yeah. Why the litter box? Have you got a cat? Don't ask. How does a tentacle sit in a beanbag chair? Oh, that part's easy. It's getting back out of it that's hard. Can you actually use that bowling ball? No, Purple brought that in here after he grew arms. He got really discouraged, though, because he doesn't have fingers. Well, see you later, Green. Yeah! Good luck in saving the world, B-Man! There's a mouse hole here. There's also one in the room with the suicidal man. It's pretty small. Let's uh, see what we can interact with. The speakers. Bowling ball. Maybe we can grab the bowling ball. It looks too heavy for me to pick up. Let's look at the world domination plans that uh, Purple put up here. Uh-oh, 
This looks like it might work. I don't need to take over the world. All right, let's turn on the stereo. Wow, this is loud. Some videotape here, let's grab that. See if we can interact with the speakers. <laughs> we can tip it over. So now the pizza fell off the roof. I guess that's what we're supposed to do in here. What about that mouse hole? Do we have anything we can use with that? What about this one? That's the only thing we have that can move. That's a stupid thing to do with a perfectly good set of channeling teeth. Alright, let's turn this off again. Whew. So let's go down and pick up whatever fell off the ceiling. Furu emerald stolen, circular prince left behind. So purple tentacle is really busy out in the world. See, we haven't gone this way. Let's just do that first. Before we head down to the lobby and grab that stuff that fell off the ceiling. So here's Nurse Edna, looking at everything here. Let's talk to her. Excuse me. What is it, my mother? Say, aren't you Bernard Bernoulli? Yes, that's right. I knew it! You broke into our mansion a few years ago to save your little friend. What did you come for this time? I'm trying to keep a tentacle from conquering the world. Really? How nice. How's Dr. Fred doing? Well, he's still upset about the family financial situation, seeing that it's his fault and all. But he seems a lot better now that he stopped sleepwalking. How did he wreck the family finances? Well, we should have made millions on the computer game they made about us. But the resident genius locked the contract in the safe in his office and forgot the combination. How did he manage to stop sleepwalking? He stopped sleeping. Fred drinks a lot of coffee. Me, I only drink decaf. Well, enough about Dr. Fred. Shall we talk about me? <laughs> <laughs> I was just admiring your statue. Thank you. It's been in the Edison family since colonial times. One of Fred's ancestors carved it. This is quite an array of gadgetry you have here. Yes, it's the best surveillance system in the state. Are those xenophobe crystal matrix monitors? They sure are. They're so clear you can see the fleas on the bedroom walls. Don't touch! Is that a Plexus 7000 VCR? It sure is. It's got a dual tape speed motor with cobalt casing. Don't touch it! Do you think I could uh, play with these a bit? Absolutely not. I'll let you get back to what you are doing. Come back any time, you big hunk. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she likes Bernard a little bit. We have a videotape that we picked up. Let's see if we can use it to this. Get away from that. Uh, apparently not. She's uh, too aware of everything. Let's look at the monitor. It's Dr. Fred's office. I can see the safe. I can almost make out the combination. It's get away from there. Darn. We have to do something about Nurse Edna first. Maybe we can just push her. She's on this chair anyway. <laughs> well, you know what they say. If you want to save the world, you gotta push a few old ladies down the stairs. 
Alright, so now we can use the videotape here with the VCR and tape, I guess, the combination. Dr. Fred Edison, <laughs> Internal Revenue, come with us. We'd like to go over some of your records with you, upstairs. The tape's at the end. All right, let's rewind this. Is this the speed? And then play. So 57, 101. 9997 Dr. Fred Edison Internal Revenue Come with us. So now we have the uh, combination here. So let's just head downstairs, or maybe we should uh, check the last door before we do that. Hey, aren't you weird Ed Edison, the paramilitary nut? Why, yes, I... Hey, do I know you? Yeah, I'm Bernard Benulli. I broke into your house five years ago, kidnapped your hamster, broke into your piggy bank. Mm, no, doesn't ring a bell, but I can't remember much about that period anyway. My psychotherapist thinks something traumatic happened to me back then that I'm blocking out. So you gave up the crazy military commando thing? I'm much better now. I don't have those, those bad thoughts anymore. Now I collect stamps. That's quite a nice collection. Can I have it? No. I mean, uh, no. They mean a lot to me. Sometimes I think they're the only friends I've got. Nice hamster. Does he do tricks? No, he just sits there. I used to have a really smart hamster, but something happened to him. What happened to the old hamster? I... I don't remember. When I try, all I can think of is a flash of light and this horrible sound. What was the horrible sound? It was sort of like... Ding! Oh, God! I hear it in my dreams till this day. That hamster really should get some exercise. Well, Dad puts him to work down in the basement sometimes. But then he starts sweating, and then he gets wet, and then he gets cold, and then he refuses to work. Your dad or the hamster? Are you making fun of me? No, I... I get upset when people make fun of me. I just meant... Oh, it makes me so mad. I just want to... Relax. I want to relax. I'll be okay if I just focus on my stamps. Are all your hobbies this fascinating? I don't have any other hobbies. These stamps are my whole life. If anything were ever to happen to them... How are the folks? Where well, Dad's in the basement doing an experiment, Mom's in the next room spying on a honeymoon, Ted's in the front yard... Holding up a bowl of lard? Well, it's a birdbath, actually, but it rhymes better your way. Well, hope I didn't get you too excited. Bye. Peace be with you. 
So we need the hamster for the generator downstairs. Maybe we can pick it up. <laughs> we just grab the hamster. Let's take a look at him. <laughs> there he is. Cute little fella. Yeah, he didn't look too comfortable. Um, let's look at this computer. Ah, oh, yeah, you can play a maniac mansion here. Jeepers! Twenty years ago, so they have the entire Maniac Mansion game in here. That was also in the original Day of the Tentacle. But we don't want to do that right now. <laughs> so let's just exit. That's nice that you can do that. Maybe I'll do that after I finish this game. If you look at his stand album. Hey. Don't touch my stamps. I oh, better not touch them. Let's just look at them then. Pony Express stamps. Yes, not the most valuable kind, but they have a lot of sentimental value to me. All right, guys, we'll leave off here, and we'll continue in the next episode. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.